So with update 12.0 coming up soon, we got some new ships. Uh, the hybrid battleship line. These uh, a little bit cursed looking ships are coming to the live server now. Interestingly, it's got only 10 guns. Um, I thought the tier 10 would have 12, much like the uh, Kier Sarge has 12 guns. Um, this one only has 10, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the other interesting changes compared to the Kier Sarge, which of course was the first hybrid battleship we had a look at, we have actual bombers this time, not rocket planes. We have dive bombers that, well, American dive bombers are pretty solid. So we'll see how much damage those can actually pump out. Uh, but other than that, I'm expecting these to be kind of just mediocre. I haven't played these at all, as you can see. Uh, the armor layout is really the just really questionable part here. <laughs> you just can't play close range with these things, which is unfortunate. Not the play style I like very much. Uh, but hey, at least you get a bit of an armored flight deck and that. And hopefully these guns are capable of doing some damage as well. Uh, just looking at the commander quickly, it's a pretty standard battleship build. Outside of this, focus fire training, uh, I took it mainly because it actually reduces the cooldown on these bombers. So it's 108 seconds here, instead of the 120 second standard that we usually would have on this ship. Also taking this uh, air groups mod also increases that as well. So I do want to get some value out of these planes. I have spec'd into them as much as you kind of can. Of course, we're going for aiming systems here and uh, not much else to really run on this third upgrade. So I thought extra range since we're definitely gonna be playing pretty far back. I think the base range is somewhere around 22 kilometers. It's all right, but we all know tier 10 can be a little bit farther away from that than that at least. So that's the Louisiana. I'll be looking at the other ships soon enough, uh, but for now I wanted to start with the tier 10, see what it's actually capable. Of course, these ships are gonna be just ridiculously expensive in early access. We've all seen it before. As always, I definitely recommend you guys wait two months and then you can just grind these for free like a normal tech tree ship. Yeah, these ships just look so weird in the water, man. I don't know. It's just, it's so strange. And look at this little back turret here tucked underneath everything. <laughs> uh, we'll see how that goes. I mean, the initial impressions, the turret angles for that gun are horrible. Oh my goodness. That is not what we want to be seeing here. Uh, but they're 406s, these main guns. We'll see how well they can possibly perform. Um, we all know 457 is a little more desirable these days at tier 10. Uh, Alaska doing some weaving here. Notice we have like a 10 second travel time out here. We'll send those out. Look at the dispersion real quick. Maybe it's going to be all right. I don't know. Um... I don't really like playing Kier Sarge. I think, oh, that's pretty good damage at least. Uh, but I, you guys know, not a huge fan of the Kier Sarge. So we'll see what this Louisiana can do. Um, I think the big issue here is actually just gonna be how fragile we are. Yeah, we got a lot of HP, but it's a really, really big target. And we gotta show a lot of broadside to actually shoot our all our guns. And of course we have a bit of a disadvantage there. If we want to shoot our guns, um, because we have a few less than a Montana even, and uh, the turret angles are no good. I guess I'll take this shot at the Monty. It's pretty far away though. We're broadside to a Schlieffen. I'm not too concerned about that. Let's see what the arcs are kiting, right? So we know pushing in is not gonna be this ship's role. So let's see what kiting can do. Um, much better, wow. Yeah, so you're going to be wanting to, I mean, you're going to kite with this thing. This is how you're probably going to angle it so that you actually have a reasonable ability to not eat huge hits. I'm going to go after that Alaska, don't you worry. I wanted to get one more salvo out. Typically want to let my guns be fully on a reload, but we just don't have anything spotted, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. All right, so there's a sub in the cap. We'll send those out. Let's see, do they have the range? 12 and a half? Probably has the range to hit me. But yeah, we're, we're playing passive. I think we all knew that that was gonna happen. A bit of splash damage, feels pretty good. I'm actually gonna swap to... Oh, we're gonna eat those now. Oh, whatever. Misplay slightly, it's not a huge deal. 16K to the 
GK superstructure. <laughs> Poor guy. Alrighty. Let's see if we can't hit this Alaska pretty hard. Or maybe the GK, actually. GK's coming, looking like a good target. The ship is on fire. I changed my mind. Oh, I didn't... I clicked a little too early. 5k? It's pretty good. Let's rip that. And then I guess we check and see if Alaska's burning. He's not burning, so we could actually relight him. So this is a tactic you can use in these hybrids. Is swap over to your HE. It's actually pretty good. Um, especially if you're lighting fires with these bombers. It's a pretty good tactic for farming damage. Although we only got two hits there, so not a huge amount. And I'll swap back over to the AP. So that's why we're going to actually run the uh, expert loader upgrade on the cam on the commander. Really useful for ships that want to uh, use multiple ammo types. We're pretty, pretty slow to turn, although I was kind of on the border here. So that's probably why we're a little bit slow on the turn. 25 seconds, tell our bombers. They actually come up reasonably quick. 108 seconds, like I kind of thought, oh, you know, two minutes, that's a long time, but... It's not actually that long to wait for these bombers, surprisingly. Uh, let's see if we can get a big slap in here on the GK real quick. This should be where 406 is a pretty good, right? This is where you want... You don't really care about overmatch, you just want accuracy. And that's pretty accurate front salvo. 19k, feeling pretty good. We'll send another one in at this Alaska. This will be AP, though. Ooh, the turret traverse, though. You notice that? Alright, let's see. One more with the front guns, then we'll go in with the bombers. These are much more accurate guns than I thought they were going to be. Uh, it's three, actually. 75k to start here, not bad. GK should go down, um, but we will just go after him to make sure. Oh, Kaga's after him. We're good. I think. Yeah, he'll go down. We're good. I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're definitely losing a lot of these points. Here we go. That should be a decent drop. And a bad damage. It's all right. And the GK actually is living. He must have got a heal up. I should have, uh, I should have gone after him in hindsight. Notice we're just like absolutely crushing at sea here, so it's not a huge deal. We're giving up all this map control. We don't have a spotter, also something to keep in mind with this ship. So that's where this extra range can be kind of useful. Notice our carrier is going to spot. We have a chappy. Man, that's a target that can get dev struck. Let's try there. Forty seconds on our uh, planes. It's good to know. Schlieffen within, not quite within secondary range. Uh, we missed entirely. It's too bad. Montana, definitely a spooky target to shoot at us. We're doing okay, I would say. But yeah, there's that superstructure hit, right? Like that's the, that's the real pain point of this battleship. And it will continue to be. Uh, Alaska stopping here? Yeah. Looks like a stop to me. And three seconds, we'll have our planes. So let's take those. Go after this Alaska again. I'm kind of focusing this poor guy. But he is the target we need to take out here. Another hit into our superstructure. Hurts a lot. But we're undetected, right? So we have a 13.6 kilometer concealment. So that's actually better than uh, better than I thought it would be. I'm not gonna lie. All right, let's go in for our attack. And pretty good. Double fire. 12k. <laughs> okay, more than pretty good. That was disgusting. <laughs> With the Kaga coming in to help as well. Yikes, poor guy. All right, on to the Schlieffen. Depending on how this AP salvo goes, we'll probably go to HE. Yeah, yeah, I think it's HE. 
start the fires up. I know that the Schlieffen can deal with fires reasonably well, but uh, I do want to be cooking with fires because then we can always just use our bombs to get more of those. Do a bit of a blind shot there. I saw he was kind of turning. We don't want to kite too far away. The concern is that, um, well, we let the Schlieffen get in secondary range and kill us here, but also if we kite too far away, they just go up and kill, kill all our forces at B. So we gotta be a little bit careful. But it seems like Schlieffen's staying here. All right, get another HE Salvo into him. Just like that. And then we're gonna turn our ship so we make it around this island. And then go with the planes. 10,000 damage out of the HE there. It's no joke. This American HE is not bad. Might take a hit. Yeah. I'm not too... Honestly, I should maybe I should be more worried, but I'm not too worried about a Schlieffen until he gets in secondary range. Alright. He's maneuvering now. So I guess here the weakness for me is that I'm just not as good with these kind of planes. Um... Yeah, I kind of hit into his turrets there. But hey, we got another fire. Those are always nice to have. And while we're waiting for uh, a shot on the Schlieffen again, we can just go after Monty real quick. And if the Schlieffen's going to go broadside to us, I will swap. We do have a 16-second shell swap time where we can just do it for free. Um, doesn't look like he's quite wanting to go broadside yet. We're within secondary range now, so this is where Schlieffens get pretty scary. <laughs> but he's low enough that we should be all right. Start up a heal. Swap back to the AP. Yeah, he's on 6,000, and he should be going down here. Actually, maybe not. We just need a few more hits from our teammates. There we go. 20 second uh, immunity period on our damage control. So all of the secondaries that are gonna hit us, there's no chance of them ever getting uh, another fire, which is nice. We definitely need to kill that. <laughs> uh, submarine, submarine on the flank, very, very, very spooky. He should die. I mean, we have so many battleships. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we have so many battleships. Hey, we're up to 150k already, guys. I mean, that's not bad. Oh, he was coming for me. All right, do a little slowdown. And I'm holding AP here for the Chappie. If the Chappie wasn't here, I would be wanting to run a, uh, you know, a broadside even? Wow. I'd want HE for the Yamato. So we're actually gonna swap over to the HE because I'm so confident that these guns will kill this Chappie, right? Yeah, first shell even. Damn, okay. All right, Louisiana. Are you kind of a good ship or something? Oh, unfortunately he got the fire. One hit Citadel, one hit fire. I guess that's a fair trade. Kind of. <laughs> All right, Mr. Yamato. Here's your HE salvo. And then here's your planes on the way. It's, uh, this is kind of, kind of good, honestly. Especially for, like, the meta where... Oh, I didn't lead enough. That's bad. Especially for the meta here where we're wanting to play at the, at the back and have impact from the back. I'm actually kind of low here. Um, do I need to recall and rep that? I don't think so. Not spotted. Unless Monty gets a big hit in here, I might actually die. I think we're alright. We'll be okay. I hope. <laughs> uh, playing a little dangerously here with our HP. I want to hit towards the front, because that's where he doesn't have a fire. Yeah, double fire there is quite nice. There we go. There's the rep, right? So that's what we're looking for, is like, repair that, and then... Uh, we get ourselves some permanent fires, you know? Game's gonna end though, so we may as well just try some blind shots. Not bad, 170K? I don't know. Kiting away, this thing feels pretty good. 
it's this kind of pushing angle that I'm concerned about with this ship specifically. Uh, I guess we're neutral. 170 though, that's not a bad first game. Um, the power level's definitely there from the planes. So we can see they did uh, they did pretty decent damage, and I'm not even good with planes. Could definitely get more out of that. And look at our fire damage. Yeah, like if we had been able to optimize our uh, farming ability, we would have done so much more with the fires. So I'm all right with that, honestly. Uh, this ship might be pretty good. I don't know where the Holland is, but considering I'm being permanently spotted here, I think that means the Holland is up here somewhere. We gotta watch out for those torps. There they are, yep. Okay. Ow. See, at close range, man, this thing just takes so much pain. I'm hoping the Guden can finish off the Puerto Rico. Although I probably die here, huh? All right, so we got the Puerto Rico. I die to him because our superstructure is so big. That is the issue, right? If you're in a position where you're pushed up too far, like I was this game, uh, you're gonna die very quickly in this ship. Also, keep in mind that there are some games where you have to push in. Um, so it's not like it was just a misplay here to push in. There are certain matchups where, as a battleship player, you can't just sit and spawn. Uh, you got to try and push in and make a play. So that's going to be the downside of the Louisianas for sure. Just like the Kearsarge, like you can't push in without taking those massive hits at any angle, right? Like you saw the Puerto Rico was just crushing me. And there's really not much you can do about it. So I guess that means for me the Louisiana is a good, in fact, probably very strong tier 10 battleship that I don't really enjoy playing or I don't think I'm going to enjoy playing it. It's that weakness, that close range stuff that I want to be able to do, even if I don't have the best ship suited for it, right? Like maybe I'm not in a Schlieffen, for example, uh, but I still want to be able to do that and be reasonably comfortable in making those uh, more aggressive plays. And Louisiana, it's not going to do that. Um, <laughs> it's a little better than Kearsarge, right? Like this is at least kind of armored, but yeah, it's just... It's just going to take so much damage at close range. 406s are a bit of a weakness, certainly, as well. You don't have even have as many as a Montana does, so that means you just have to get value out of the planes. And it's really not hard to. Even someone like me who sucks with planes was still able to do some decent damage with them. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a reasonably strong ship, especially in those long-duration games that, that really happen some of the time in World of Warships, the ones where you can just sit it back at range and farm for 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, they're going to be very, very good in that scenario. But it's just that close range stuff that I would have uh, some concerns about. But that's the first impressions of the Louisiana. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You're going to see much more of this ship and a few of the others that are releasing in the upcoming update um, as I play them more. And hopefully I get some good games to show you guys. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.